Hi friends, welcome to Law Excellence. Today's current efforts for beginners. Now, so let me explain you the, the the previous video questions first. Now, come to the first question here. In which among the following India is not a member? So, an uh, answer is so B. So, in the OECD group, uh, so India is a not a member. Now, come to second question. So, with regards to hydropower in India, consider the following statements. India is the largest producer of hydropower in the world. So, it is a wrong statement because so India is the seventh largest producer of hydropower in the world. Second one, Ministry of Power is responsible for implementing small and large hydropower projects. So it is not a small, only large hydropower projects. So it is also incorrect. So answer is D, none. So select the correct answer he has asked. Means answer is D. Now come to so today's main questions. These are the three main questions. Try to answer these questions. And so write a so after writing model answer, so please so upload into our website called civilsprep.com so there you can get your own feedback from your colleagues or from students and also we are also going to so give feedback valuable feedback to you now come to today's articles the article articles are like first one infrastructure leasing and financial services IL and FS so comes under GS three economy subject and the second one DRDO about DRDO so it comes under GS3 internal security defense research development organization and the third one transgender persons bill 2018 so comes under GS2 polity and also we can take under social society so under society the fourth one Lokpal so what is Lokpal so what are like a who can appoint or who can so eligible for Lokpal member so we will see all these under Lokpal and next China Pakistan economic corridor comes under GS2 international relations China Pakistan economic corridor CPEC so these are the articles we are going to discuss in today's video now Come to the first article. So in this, see, banks hit by IL and FS crisis seek relief. Now, here, so we should know about IL and FS. So what is IL and FS here? Infrastructure, so leasing and financial services. Now, we'll see about IL and FS here. So it is... An Indian infrastructure development and finance company. So its projects right include see it is an Indian infrastructure development and finance company. It is an investment company. So it was established or registered. So it's a RBI registered core investment company started or formed by three financial institutions. They are CBI like a Central Bank of India, Central Bank of India, Unit Trust of India, UTI. Now currently it is so named as Axis Bank. And the third one, HDFC Bank, Housing Development Finance Corporation. So these are the three banks. So started the this IL and FS it is the RBI so core investment company so RBI registered core investment company on different developmental aspects in India so it's some of the projects include like some of the like one of the largest infrastructure project in India like uh, it's like a longest tunnel and Chennai Nashri tunnel Chennai Nashri Tunnel which was so opened in 
April 2017. So these are the some so official and uh, major uh, projects so done by IL and FS right with with an investment by IL and FS. Now currently it is institutional share, shareholders like uh, LIC the shareholders are LIC Oryx and uh, ADIA means Abu Dhabi Investment Authority Abu Dhabi Investment Authority so these are the three shareholders currently so of uh, IL and FS so state bank of state bank of india so it was a shareholder once in like in uh, to the up to 2017 so after which it sold its stake uh, in the company so now currently sbi is not a shareholder of il and fs so lic oryx and ad abu dhabi investment authority so they are the shareholders of il and fs so it's all about uh, so il and fs we should know now come to the second order indigenous gun trials of army to enter next stage by june see here it's all about the features of uh, advanced toward artillery gun system so atags so developed by so drdo means you should know the dr about a uh, drdo defense research and development organization so it works under department of defense research and development of ministry of defense so it is dedicatedly working towards enhancing self-reliance in defense system and undertakes design and development so leading to production of world class weapon systems and equipment in accordance with the, the expressed needs and the qualitative requirements laid down by laid down by three services like three military services like army so navy and uh, so air force so these are the three services so which can which are uh, giving the services to drdo to make a, a world class weapon system and that should be a self reliance in defense system and so equipment so drdo is working in various areas of uh, military technology so which include aeronautics armaments combat vehicles like um, electronics and instrumentation engineering systems like very very important like missiles materials novel systems um, advanced computing simulation and life sciences so these are in the, these are the areas where sir so drdo is always so we keep on working so what is the vision of the drdo so vision is what we are discussed is what like a like make india prosperous by establishing world class science and technology base and provide our defense services decisive edge by equipping them with internationally competitive systems and uh, solutions and this is vision of the drdo now come to the mission the mission is design development led to so production of production state of the art sensors weapon systems platforms and led equipment for our defense services what we discussed earlier and it also provide technological solutions to the defense services to optimize combat effectiveness and to promote well-being of the troops and develop so very important develop infrastructure and committed quality manpower and build strong technology base core competence and these are the submissions of the drdo now so come to the history of the drdo so drdo started its first major project in sam like in surface to air missiles surface to air missiles known as project indigo so in 1960 so in 1960s so indigo was indigo the project was unsuccessful so it was discontinued and then and this project indigo led to so project devil so project indigo led to project devil and this project along with project valiant so to develop 
a short range sam short range sam and icbm intercontinental ballistic missiles in 1970s and then later the project devil itself led to the a later development of prithvi missiles and this prithvi missile so it was under the integrated guided missiles development program so ig mdp integrated guided missile development program in 1980s means after 10 years so this ig mdp so again will it's like a, i mean it's led to so development of some comprehensive range of missiles like uh, agni missile prithvi akash trishul and nag missile so this is what hierarchy of dr dr do so what it has done so in the history so these are the missiles developed by dr do so with an hierarchy like first it started with the project indigo so in 1960s when it was like a unsuccessful it led to project devil along with a project valiant in 1970s to develop a short range sam and icbm in 1970s and later it uh, so led to a so pro like led to so project devil itself led to the a prithvi missile development under icmdp so that leads to a comprehensive range of missiles development like agni missiles prithvi akash trishul and nag missiles and this is what like uh, missiles development under drdo so it is the importance of drdo now come to the uh, next article here so against the mandate for inclusion the transgender persons bill so we'll discuss about this bill like 2018 so was there any history over so for this particular bill yes there was a history that so in 2014 there was a transgender persons bill later in 2016 and again so it was so currently so we have discussed this bill so in 2018 now when you come to the so evolution of a transgender legislation so in february 2014 supreme court passed a landmark judgment paving the way for enshrining the rights of transgender in the law the apex court deemed that individuals had individuals had the right to so right to the self identification of their sexual orientation and this is what a judgment given in given by supreme court in 2014 and it ruled that fundamental rights granted by the constitution are equal applicable to transgenders who constitute the third gender but there was a, a community upset with the judgment like more like here it is recognized as a transgenders and and what further it said is so individuals have to submit themselves to a medical examination by a district screening committee comprising of a, a chief medical officer a psychiatrist a social worker and a member of the transgender community see here so it said that uh, individual have to the have to submit themselves to a medical examination so it was somewhat uh, so led to a community upset uh, so in 2014 and further uh, the supreme court had given a judgment again like uh, so this judgment a judgment also called for affirmative action in education so there was a feasibility for transgenders like in education primary health care and that so transgenders be identified as a, a beneficiaries of social welfare schemes so it was a good decision given by a good judgment given by supreme court but here the community upset is because of the so medical examination by, by so different uh, so medical officers or psychiatrist or social worker and it is somewhat upset to the transgenders so it led to a communal riot by the so transgenders in the 
2014 year so later it was so amended in 2016 but has not clearly given the judgment or so not clearly defined the definition of a transgender but recently in 2018 this bill so the judgment has given so cleared clear definition of the transgenders so it means it, it the revised definition omits the a reference to so it is neither male nor female formulation and covers with like any person whose gender does not match the gender assigned at birth so as well as trans men trans women so those with the intersex variations the gender queer and those who designate themselves based on socio cultural identities such as so like hijra arwani kinnar and jogta these are the different names so oh, so it it has clearly defined that uh, so at the time of the birth so if the if the sex was not determined so then so all other so other categories like a so other than the male and female so all categories can be called with the different names so they can easily they can so so themselves they can call so with any name and it's like a third gender so means here the reference is so birth so at the time of the birth if the gender is not decided as a male or female then so he can be a third gender and this is what definition of the transgender persons like under transgender persons bill 2018 by supreme court so this is about the bill of bill and history of this particular transgender persons bill now come next article so government didn't try to select lokpal so here you should know about the lokpal so what is lokpal what is the composition of lokpal so who can become the chairperson of it and who can become a member and who cannot become a member of the lokpal so we'll discuss about this lokpal here so about these particular concepts so it is a statutory body means it is not a a constitutional body and so it was created with so by so the lokpal and lokayukta so act like a 2013 so it, it this act seeks to provide for the establishment of lokpal for the union so lokpal for the union and lokayuktas for the states so in the union there was a lokpal and there should be lokpal and in the states there should be lokayuktas so what it meant for to inquire into allegations of corruption against certain public functionaries and for related matters and this is the main object of the lokpal or lokayuktas so in our country now so what is the composition of lokpal so it is made up of one chairperson and so maximum of 8 members one chairperson and 8 members so next here Eight persons, if you take, so fifty percent of the members, like four members, should be from judicial members. Should be judicial members. Again, other fifty member, fifty percent, like four members, they should they should be members, like from SC or ST or OBC or minorities and women. and this is what a composition of the lokpal now here who can become a chairperson the chairperson so is to be appointed as the chair so the person who is appointed as the chairperson of the lokpal should be either of a, so like a, the former chief justice of india or the former judge of the supreme court so not not serving or current so former judge of supreme court or em or eminent person with impeccable integrity and outstanding ability having a special knowledge and expertise of minimum 25 years in the matters relating to anti corruption policy or a public administration or a vigilance or finance including insurance and banking 
law and management from these sectors or a fields so the person should at least have a 25 years of minimum expert experience so as a eminent person and so here the chairperson can be former former chief justice of india or former supreme court judge or so 25 years eminent uh, expertise from different fields and that is okay eligibility or qualification of chairpersons and these are the eight members so we already we have discussed uh, so who can be uh, those eight members now so now, who cannot become the chairperson so the following persons like uh, so cannot become a chairpersons of uh, uh, lokpal so like mp or mla so and persons convicted of any offenses involving moral uh, turpitude so next less than 45 years of age or not eligible and members of panchayats or municipality a person who was removed or dismissed from the public service or a person who holds any office of trust or profit or a person who is affiliated to a political party so also cannot be so cannot be become a, a chair person of this particular body like a lokpal so next appointment of chair persons and members when you come to this particular section so the members can or like to be appointed by the president on the recommendation of a selection committee so which consist of a prime minister chair per as a chair person speaker of lok sabha the leader of opposition in lok sabha chief justice of india or a judge nominated by him or her and one eminent jurist and this selection committee is important and that selection committee should consist of prime minister as a chairperson of this particular committee and a speaker of uh, lok sabha and the leader of opposition and uh, chief justice of india or a judge nominated by him so or nominated by chief justice of india or one eminent jurist this is the body or so in selection committee so recommended by president to so appoint the chair person of this particular body the term of office of lokpal chairman and members is 5 years or till attaining the age of 70 years so now come to the last article so china's pak investments take a military turn so in this article we can clearly analyze so what is cpec so china pakistan economic corridor so this diagram shows that and this is what a corridor from the province called xinjiang province of china so up to the godar port of the deep sea port of pakistan called godar and this is a link or a corridor in terms of a road network or a railway network oil and gas pipeline also can be established here and there is also a fiber optics and this is some completely in the economic perspection so between china and india why it is very relevant so because so we know that pakistan and china are friends from a very so very long time so they have trading relations through the ancient silk road so in the ancient history we can see that there was a silk road between so pakistan and china so because so that importance made it that so to motivate so in the economic perspective to china so to make a, a corridor so to the western asia so now so both the countries wants to want to increase the volume of their trade so china decided to make a, a large investment in pakistan under its one belt and one road vision one belt and one road vision so one belt and one road vision through this particular project called cpec china pakistan economic corridor project so the 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 cpec is a combination of infrastructure development power generation and research and development project the study addresses the historical relations between pakistan and china moreover pointed out the benefits that pakistan and china are expecting from the so this project now what is the main objective of this project so the main objective was so it was launched in 2015 
to so it's connecting the so Gwadar port in Pakistan to the Xinjiang region. So by means of highways, airways, and railways, and also deploy a pipeline to transport oil and gas. The corridor will also act as a trade route for Chinese goods and commodities. So meant for the Middle East and Africa region. And this is what some one of the so the major objective. So here the objective is what so having a to have a, a trade and this route can act as a trade route between so of Middle East Africa with China and so through so highways airways and railways and also to deploy a pipeline to transport oil and gas so through this particular route so you can clearly see this particular map and this is what uh, so Xinjiang province the area called Kashgar and this is called Kashgar and here and there is a point called Sugwadar and this is what the route called so CPEC so the project this project was first proposed in 2013 to commence the work or signed in April 15 so started in like the idea so it was proposed in 2013 and signed so agreement signed to have this particular CPAC in 2015 the first phase projects will so receive so it's like it's estimating that 46 dollar billion so US dollars so in the form in the form of a concessionary and commercial loans the CPAC includes three corridors so presently so work started in the western corridor so in this part and the other two corridors are central and the eastern regions so eastern central and the western regions and these are the three phases in this part of CPEC now, what is the India's concern about the CPEC project? So, India's main concentration is about the corridor's route through the POK region, so park occupied Kashmir region. So, which we consider as our territory and construction of CPEC would further strengthen the Pakistan's claim over the region. That is somewhat fear or a concern by the India. So, there are some several other concerns also, like China's presence in the strategic location of POK and as a connecting point to southwest southwest central and east asia it may limit the india's outreach to the eurasian region and it is what a major concern and the second concern like a godar port further expands the china's strings of pearls strings of pearls so we should know about again strings of pearls what it is strings of pearls refer to a a network of ports which China is building from its eastern coast to the West Asia. So in the Indian Ocean region. So if you take, and this is what India. So from the eastern China region. So across this Indian Ocean region. So to the, the West Asia region. So by making a, a network of ports and this network of ports is called strings of pearls so what are the like here the ports will come under so, so completely all these ports are provided in our material so have a look on those material so we are going to attach with this particular video so in our uh, telegram channel so and also an important point is here so the Gadar port is also a one of the pearl or a port so in a string of pearl which was created by china so that is why so india is concerning these are the some three concerns so the concerns are so pok region and again china's interventions so it may it may affect our so india's outreach in the south west central and east asia to the eurasian region and other one is Gwadar port. So it may further expand the China's string soap pearls. These are the three concerns India raised. So against this particular CPEC project. Now, to come to today's questions. 
so we'll discuss the so answer and explanation in the next video so the questions are first one which of the following is or are incorrect with regards to string of pearls so we have discussed just so go through the material then you can easily answer it with this particular question so here it is a network of ports which china is building from eastern coast to western asia and it is china pakistan economic corridor strings of pearls are widespread from the strait of hormuz to strait of malacca so marova so means in maldives is also a part of string of pearls so select the correct answer using the course given below so try to answer it no second question infrastructure leasing and financial services il and fs is a rbi registered core investment company formed by the central bank of india hdfc housing development finance corporation the third one unit trust of india so try to again answer this particular question no so as guys this is what a lox dot in civil spread is our youtube channel so you will get a uh, this video and so material of this particular video so both you will get in this particular uh, link and this is our telegram channel again the same you can get in this particular channel also so thank you